afternoon, your group two. My name is Megan Blanchard. Sarah Bonman, Renee Bullock. Scott Benton, Patrick Brown. And Amber Brothel. And for our project, we researched price, availability, and, and also shelf placement of calculators at six local retailers, including Target, Walmart, Shopco, Best Buy, Office Max, and Office Depot. Our generic market includes a set of all function-specific calculators, including basic calculators, uh, wrapping, scientific, and financial calculators. Now we're going to give you a brief demonstration of how calculators can make financial functions both easy and quick. Okay, so for our demonstration, Scott is going to have a scientific calculator, and Renee is going to be writing on the board. So first off, can someone tell me what 19 plus 18 is? 37. Who's the winner? Okay, and then 536,000 divided by 5. 107,200. Okay, good job. So basically that was just to show that calculators are for fast and easy use, and they are pretty much important for our everyday lives. In the rest of our presentation, we're going to be covering our generic market, our product market, and the reasons why we chose to focus on scientific calculators and our specified target market. As far as justifying why we would choose scientific calculators over the other types of calculators, such as graphing, financial, or basic, there's a lot more that goes into choosing a specific product beyond just your target market, your product market, your generic market. You have to take into account things like, you know, what it means to have that particular product. Obviously, when it comes to graphing calculators, which is what we originally wanted to align ourselves with, we saw that TI, Texas Instruments, has a huge market control in uh, graphing calculators, and then Casio is just kind of there to pick up the pieces of whatever's left over. When it comes to financial calculators, it's just too specific. It's, it's too much of a niche market. It's the financial sector of businesses who don't have their own programs that already do their financial functions. Whereas basic calculators, they're a dime a dozen. You can go to any place, any uh, grocery store, any convenience store, and you can pick up a basic calculator, sometimes for only 30 to 50 cents. So we chose scientific calculators because they have relatively, they're easy to use, while they also have high functionality and also relatively low in price. When you can have a scientific calculator that has three quarters or more functions of a graphing calculator, minus the graphing function, obviously, for less than 20 bucks, then not only are you getting a lot of functions for a small price, you're also getting a very functional calculator that's relatively easy to use and also can be unique in size, shape, and color. See, when it comes to scientific calculators, you can align yourself and you can market yourself towards just about anybody you want. If you want a pink calculator, you can get a pink calculator. If you want a blue one, you can get a blue one. Scientific calculators also come in various sizes, such as a four-line scientific calculator, a two-line, a one-line, a three-line. We've, we've even seen some five-line calculators, which is really just on the verge of being a graphic calculator. So leading into who we would align ourselves with what, by choosing scientific calculators, we have Hewlett Packard. This is another thing that you have to take into account when determining what product you would go with beyond generic market, product market, target market. See, we chose Hewlett Packard because they have extremely high brand recognition. Everybody knows those blue letters, that slash H and that slash P. That's Hewlett Packard. The high brand recognition basically means that you have a trustworthy product and you're creating a trustworthy product and you're giving it to your consumers and they're gonna like that. So not only is Hewlett Packard great for this, but they have a huge advertising department designed for their electronics. You don't really see a lot of Texas Instrument calculator commercials. You don't really see a lot of Casio calculator commercials. So we have HP, who is big into the electronics, and they're going to be able to create those commercials for scientific calculators that we're going to be able to use. Then um, HP, with HP, we can get heavy into, say, advertising. And when it comes to advertising, we can be the first mover advantages. Just like in Madden, we want to basically create the advertising firm that's going to bring us out into the scientific calculator world. We're going to be the first ones out there. Like I said earlier, there's not really a lot of single competitor dominance in scientific calculators. So if we can be out there, oh, it's the HP scientific calculator. You know, oh, it's the HP calculator that the consumer is going to want. So if a person goes to a grocery store and they're looking for a calculator that's relatively cheap and also easy to use like a scientific calculator is, then if they've already seen our commercial, if they've already heard our radio ad, if they've already seen our advertisement in the newspapers, 
then they're going to automatically be drawn to that HP calculator that's sitting on the shelf right in the middle of the scientific calculators. See, as you can tell, there's a lot of different variables that go into picking a product, like I said, beyond generic market, product market, target market, even though that's a huge part of why we chose scientific calculators. And when it comes to that and specifying why beyond, say, the advertising and ease of use and the uniqueness of scientific calculators, I'll leave the generic market, product market, the target market to the rest of my group. Okay. So when we looked at our generic market, we looked at four different markets of calculators. The basic, scientific, graphic, and financial. Our information for our generic market grid came from personal research at the six locations that Megan mentioned, as well as online research from the company's website, such as HP, Casio, and Texas Instruments. Our online research helped, was compatible with what we found in the stores, and we were able to create this grid. Our qualifying dimensions describe the need for a specific type of calculator that a consumer wants. So on the vertical axis, we have high functionality, or essentially the usage that a calculator offers, how many features it has. So in the upper quadrants, we have obviously scientific and graphing, because it offers a lot more than in the lower quadrants, the basic and financial, which are limited in features. If you look on our x-axis, we have style over affordability and affordability over style. This basically means that if a consumer is more interested in what their calculator looks like, they're going to be more willing to pay that price to get that different type of calculator that sort of sets them apart. Whereas if they're more interested in the affordable aspect of it, they'll sacrifice the um, style aspect of it. So as Scott said, we decided to go with the scientific calculators because it not only, we can grow and develop in it, it's not dominated by one market, and we're not limited by features. Whereas in our basic market, Although it's 41%, we're very limited on how much we can grow. And in our financial, although you could technically grow, you're very limited as to what a financial calculator can do. And we originally decided that we wanted to go with graphing, but found that it was highly dominated by Texas Instruments. So that is why we decided to go with scientific. Now let's take a look at our product market grid for scientific calculators. First of all, I would like to explain to you our determining dimensions. On the y-axis, we have ease of use and advanced usage. Now, the criteria for these dimensions is based upon functionality, or rather, how many scientific functions the specific given calculator has. The correlation between these dimensions uh, basically operates on the basic assumption that a more advanced calculator will take more time to navigate, while a less advanced calculator will initially be easier to use for the average consumer. If you take a look at our x-axis, you'll see the determining dimensions of practicality and compatibility. Now, it's important to note that these two dimensions are not mutually exclusive. During our research, we found that a practical calculator is one that has a good equilibrium between size, price, and style. Likewise, a compatible calculator takes into account size with regards to functionality. Our reviews show that oftentimes a reduction in size will inevitably lead to a sacrifice of functions. Now, if you take a look at our segmented bundles, you'll see that around 60% of the market uh, relies on preferences for a practical calculator that's easy to use. But remember, just because the majority of the market aligns with these segments uh, doesn't mean that they don't lack the ability. Uh, to give reconciliation to the people who want advanced usage out of their calculators. Um, and the two main brands uh, that align with these are Texas Instruments and Casio. But if you look at the top quadrants of our grid, that's where the segments get very interesting. Now, the line between practicality and compatibility uh, seems to blur in the advanced sector. So when you take the segments that are aligned with Sharp and HP, Together, they create about one-fourth of the market share. However, that's a largely untapped area of the grid. So, it is our belief that based on our research, if we were to market a new product towards those segments, not only would it thrive, but it could potentially create a new segment that completely changes the normative buying preferences for consumers of scientific calculators. This leads us into our target market, our target market, we decided to focus on people who need a more advanced calculator that has a nice balance between practicality and compatibility. 
The benefits sought for this calculator should include it has a high functionality, low cost, and it's unique to its style, size, and color. We chose this section of the product market grid to show that it has low advertising to where we can advertise more, and it is very low in saturation as well, so there's easier barriers to entry. All right, so we chose scientific calculators as our product market because it's one of the more basic forms of our generic market, which is just overall calculators. And also, it is one of the segments that isn't completely dominated by a single company already has room to grow um, compared to something like graphing calculators that we already discussed is taken over by TI. So our target market is consumers who are looking for a high quality um, calculator that can also have a nice balance between practicality and compatibility. And so we decided to team up with HP because they already have a marketing and advertising department that we can work with and their brand is already very recognized and known in our culture today. So here is our bibliography page, and thank you all for your time.